Okay, excuse me especially. We slept in the truck last night and it about to kill me. I'm telling you. I almost died. Hunter, she ain't but about three and a half feet long. She can just lay in the in the seat. I gotta lay from that side across to this side. On I laid on four different belt buckles. I mean there ain't but three in the whole dag truck. I laid on four of them. Those things do hurt. Man, they hurt. <laughs> so just got up. I ate an egg normous burrito and got me a Burger King coffee, carb loaded, and got me a coffee. So we got some energy for about an hour, then we'd be trying to take a nap. But we're going to look for elk. We're in Cherokee, North Carolina, one of mine and Hunter's favorite places to visit. We've been here a bunch of times. We usually come here four or five times a year. I usually come here even more than that. But in the past two years, I don't think Hunter's been here at all, and I haven't been here in over a year. So coming back, we always try to come here in October because the elk rut around October the way I understand it. So, we are looking for elk. We've had some really cool encounters with elk before, so let's try to go find us one. Okay, we just got to a place in Cherokee that brings back really bad memories for me. And um, I feel a little triggered, and I'll let Kyle tell you the story of why. So basically, me and Hunter go hiking a lot when we're up here, and we spend a week or so, so we was hiking through the woods, come out on this creek, and there's two beautiful majestic young probably two or three year old elk like four pointers or i guess they call that two by two in elk country or whatever but anyways they're pretty cool looking pretty majestic in the water drinking and one of them looks up makes eye contact with us and charges us i mean straight hardcore running as fast as it can to get out of the creek and catch me and hunter so I took off running, left Hunter in the dust like 20 yards behind me, turn around and she's not really running and I'm like, this ain't a joke, <laughs> you need to run. And then finally I waited on her, grabbed the elk, choke slammed him, told him to go back and uh, that was it, saved Hunter's life. That part did not happen. He just left me and ran and I had to catch up to him. That's all that happened. Allegedly. Was, we're driving across the bridge up here, and me and Hunter saw bass blowing up on the bank, on probably on bluegill beds. So I went and grabbed a frog. We can't make it over there on the boat, so we're going to walk over there and try to catch them bass. <clears throat> what I'm pretty sure Kyle Wilcher's not telling you right now is the frog he has on is actually not his. It's mine. I just noticed that. seeing him from the road came up from the road saw him over here blowing up go here catch a pound three quarter one put him back and catch another one uh-oh dude there you go pickle patty Uh-oh. Uh-oh, dude. First dock I skip under. Two pounder. I'm telling you, Hunter, it's tough right now. I just caught one. Huh? First real one. Is I mean that one wasn't real? Come on. That's probably a pound and a half. What is this? Oh. This is a frog bass lake hartwell middle of the day it's like 1 30 right now skip under a dock most beautiful cast and goosh awesome that's why i want to catch them right there that is it i'm sold Keep 
playing with me, cat daddy. I'm gonna take all nine lives. Wow. Look how pretty he is. That is the most beautiful catfish I've ever seen. Hunter says it's the most beautiful catfish he's ever seen. Is that a catfish? Yeah. I think it's a flathead. It's a beautiful. Take a picture of him? Wasn't a big one, but it was a pound and a half. You see him when I set the hook? He's right there. Where is he? Oh, there's, there's a good one with it. No, no, they're, they're all small. Oh, there's a good one. Little spot in the backwater. I don't know how big they gotta be, but that's a 12 incher in the backwater. Well, today is the next day of practice, but yesterday we fished up the Tugaloo, way, way up the Tugaloo, and caught some quality actually. I lost two three to three and a half pounders, lost a couple pound and a half to two pounders, and saw some three pounders I never made a cast at. So pretty good fish up there problem is every single fish is on the most obvious cover in all those backwaters so obviously that means I can run and hit a lot of spots very very fast the problem with that is everybody's gonna be hitting the same thing and I don't think there's enough fish up there to catch them with other boats or for two or three days so we're trying to find something with a little bit more quality or a little bit more quantity even if we have to sacrifice the quality a little bit catching a limit catching 11 or 12 pounds in this tournament is gonna be huge so we gotta find a place to, that makes that easier on us. Let's go find something in this clear water. Oh, where's a good one? Oh, freaking crusty, though. Same thing. I mean, crushed it like a big and I thought it was a two pounder, but he ain't. I ain't got no hook on here. I just had one knock the heck out of it.
Nice one on a little bit of swim bait. Watch them come up and eat it. on some of them herring fish. Oh, dog, look at them. They're everywhere. Oh, that was a big one. Those, those are some three pounders. And that, that one chased my freaking thing. I got a square bill on. Okay, so in the past 16 minutes, I've probably shook off five, maybe six fish. So I'm kind of worried that they're not bass because there's a lot of pickerel and a lot of catfish in this lake. Even some, I don't, I don't know what all's in here, but I want to make sure they're bass. At least someone catch one. I hope it's not a big one. Just catch like a pound and a half, two pounder. Make me feel better about the fish and the bites I've gotten in here. So let's tie on the hook and catch one. I've been flipping with nothing. Oh, hammerhead got it. That's four pounder. 